Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be enjoying an action thriller film, entitled Attacks on Finland. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins in Tallinn, Estonia. Max and Sylvia, two secret operatives, are en route to a top secret mission. A terrorist named Titov has committed multiple illicit transactions, and they need to retrieve his laptop to prove it. Max is securing the desired item inside the house as they arrive, and a teenage girl spots them as they enter. Sylvia assures the girl that if she simply remains quiet, everything will be fine. Sylvia is forced to shoot a teenage boy who has also spotted Max inside the office. Amidst the security guards' attempts to hunt and kill the two agents, the latter quickly make their getaway from the balcony. Then Marie asks Max whether or not they are successful in securing the item, and Max replies affirmatively. Max is on his way to Maria's office at Ejpo headquarters in Belgium to be questioned about the incident. They are debating what punishment Sylvia might face if they discover her misdeed. The teenager turned out to be Titov's son. Max and Sylvia found a laptop with evidence of Titov's illegal dealings, including documents related to money laundering and a disinformation campaign. However, this information is not yet to be used as the shooting event has already been reported, and they need to straighten it out first. In the meanwhile, Maria proposes Max go back to Finland for now while Sylvia is suspended. Meanwhile, in Finland, another undercover spy called Vesa pays a jail visit to his father, the former military leader Colonel Borislav Jankovic. As a result of Vesa's involvement with the spy agency, his father treats him not as a son but as a ghost. During a browsing activity on the internet, Vesa in Sweden receives a mysterious message. He acknowledges the message's intention to help him and accepts that it should be sent. Anya, a lawyer in disguise, and Vesa meet in a coffee shop later that day. She is familiar with Vesa's history and financial difficulties. She gives him a job that can get his dad out of jail and repair his family's reputation after his father was falsely accused of a crime and sent to jail, his sibling was also murdered. Having returned to Belgium following the shooting incident with the teenager, Sylvia has re-established contact with Max. After a temporary hiatus, she has returned. At the same time, Vesa runs across Anya again in an abandoned warehouse and accepts her offer to work for Anya's boss alongside the other three guys. On the day when Finland celebrates its independence, Vesa and his men plan to attack the presidential palace in Helsinki, where many foreign diplomats congregate. Among them is French General Morel. In such a situation, Sylvia is acting as General Morel's bodyguard, she enters his room to lead him to the presidential palace. Vesa and his thugs have dressed as police officers in order to accompany the party. Instead, Anya is spying on the presidential palace from a nearby building. She is in charge of relaying messages between Vesa and Raisa, who is posing as a waitress and operating inside the target area. They have 17 minutes till the attack begins. General Morel, with Sylvia as his dance partner, joins other diplomat officials in the presidential palace for a waltz. Anya cut the signals, the CCTV camera stopped broadcasting, and Raisa is now following the president. The president is then vulnerable to an attack, and she seizes the opportunity to capture him. She raises the weapon to the president's head as Vesa and his men enter the room and shoot the guests. Everyone in the ball is now a hostage of Vesa and his men, who have worn gas masks to conceal their identities. Reports have been made to the proper authorities. Max, watching the event from his apartment, suddenly receives a message that the connection to the palace has been interrupted. He now has a strong need to go to the presidential palace where he has a feeling something horrible is happening. With the help of Anya, Vesa and the goons take over security at the palace. He warns everyone inside the palace that they must never do anything that may jeopardize their strategy, or else they will be shot. Armed forces personnel, police, rescue teams, and ambulances have surrounded the presidential palace in an effort to free the hostages inside. Max receives a call from the head of the intelligence team, who asks him to negotiate with the hostage taker and report on the situation while he is there. Max reaches the command center set up outside the palace, where he is introduced to the group responsible for seizing the hostages. There has been no word from within the palace, and they have not gotten confirmation of the exact number of people inside. On the other hand, Marie gets a call from the Finnish intelligence agency telling her that the presidential palace is under attack. However, General Morel is Vesa's primary concern. He personally seems to prevent the innocent hostages from opening fire. Thankfully, General Morel doesn't present Sylvia as her bodyguard, he tells Vesa that she is his date instead, and the two of them, along with the other embassy officials, are relocated to a separate room. Vesa is contacts the negotiator immediately. Max demands to know where the hostages are. 
Vesa reassures Max that everything is all right and frees the other prisoners before continuing to speak to him. After discussing the second option with Vesa, Anya places a call to her. Once again, Vesa contacts Max via phone to relay his list of requirements. This involves getting his father out of jail, getting a private jet, and hiring a cryptocurrency transaction specialist. The leader of the intelligence team proceeds to deliver Vesa's requests, citing the president's protection as the primary concern. Before agreeing to release his father, Max phones Max again to demand confirmation that the president and the other hostages are well. Vesa demands 150 million euros in Bitcoin after Max recognizes the president's voice on the phone. Snipers are also posted outside the palace in case anyone decides to make a break for it. Since Vesa and his men plan on transporting the hostages, they each receive a jumpsuit to wear during the trip. Suddenly, Vesa confronts the president, demanding to know why he backed NATO's unlawful war in Kosovo. To which the president replies that the United States and its diplomatic corps concur with stronger European states. Finland's diplomats are pushing for membership in NATO, and because the president doesn't get to make the final call on this, Finland will likely end up voting with the rest of the Union. Then Vesa remembers that his mother was among the 70 individuals who lost their lives because of the humanitarian attack in Kosovo. Colonel Jankovic is delivered to the presidential palace via the requested helicopter. The requested mode of transportation for Vesa has arrived, and the necessary funds are currently being transferred. In return, Max demands that he free the hostages, but before he can do that, Vesa must first remove any explosives or other dangerous devices from his father's body. The conversation with Max is abruptly ended. The hostages have changed clothes and armed themselves to look like Vesa's team. They need to maintain a consistent appearance to throw off the guards at the palace. Although he loved his son, Vesa's father did not approve of his child's irresponsible hostage-taking. Once the funds have been transferred, they must then take the hostages to the helicopter while dressed as police officers. From the rooftop, Anya gives Vesa a report on the goings-on below. Anya gives him fresh orders to assassinate the president. Max and the other military officers are tasked with rescuing the president inside the palace. While Vesa confirms that all of the hostages have been safely loaded onto the helicopter, Risa is in charge on the ground. Delta 3, one of the rescues, has been hit by gunfire. Movement in the palace's elevator to the basement is reported instantly to Max via central command. He has already left for the area. Sadly, Max is unable to chase Vesa and Colonel Jankovic. To escape, they used a car waiting near the palace's tunnel exit. Max hops in a car and drives out in pursuit of Vesa, and as he cruises down the street, he sees the car in which Vesa is located. Max follows the men as they head to a basement parking garage to switch cars with Vesa's father. Max is able to track down the car and give chase. After the car has crashed, he can see the driver and no passengers. When he realizes there's nobody else in the car, he shoots the man. Meanwhile, the other hostage takers receive word from Vesa that it is ready to transfer the hostages to the jet heading to Malmi airport. Sylvia is given an opportunity to attack the hostage taker, but she misses. Except for the president, all of the hostages are loaded onto the jet before he is killed by a shot to the head. Armed forces members stationed within the airport compound verified the president had died. Anya calls Vesa to let him know that the target has been shot down and that he should get to the aircraft. When the pilot makes a sudden maneuver, the control tower notices it. The jet has landed and is coming to pick up Vesa and Colonel Jankovic. The co-pilot then snatches one of the hostage taker's firearms while they're distracted by his pretended restroom break. The unfortunate hostage taker regains control of the firearm and mistakenly kills Colonel Jankovic. Max found that the hostage taker's destination will be Belarus. Finland will no longer be participating because this is no longer within their jurisdiction. To determine the plane's whereabouts, Max called Marie. In Belarus, it got down in an abandoned factory. Marie claims that the government in this section of the country is unstable and cannot be relied upon. Upon his arrival in Belarus, Vesa paid military authorities in order to get vehicles and weapons. There was widespread shock at the news of the death of Finland's president. When Max reaches the cold Belarusian border, he is met by Jonesy and Sinclair, two military personnel stationed in Belarus who will lead him to the hostage kidnapper's hideout. While visiting a cyber factory, Vesa and his men run across Titov. Three of Vesa's men are killed in quick succession by snipers placed high above. Alongside Vesa, only Sylvia and General Morel are still alive. At the same time, Marie reports three casualties on the ground to Max. The three survivors are taken into the cyber factory, where Titov shows General Morel and Sylvia. 
Titov recognizes Agent Sylvia as a member of the European law enforcement community. However, Max is plotting his strategy to save Sylvia and General Morel. He spots a sewer pipe that leads into the cyber factory, unseen by the guards. Inside the factory, Titov is setting up a press conference for General Morel, where Morel will announce that he is a member of a group of far-right officers funded by Moscow. Having changed into his uniform, General Morel is now prepared to address the assembled media. Once Max sees Vesa being led inside, he showed his identity. A guard nearly catches Max from behind, but Vesa is there to save him. Sylvia will now name the EU official responsible for the kid murders. However, information reaches Titov that Vesa has disappeared. Sylvia manages to steal Titov's gun and uses it to kill his guards. By stealing a bulletproof car from the Belarusian military, Vesa is able to make his escape. Taking use of the fallen guard's phone, Sylvia calls for quick air help for herself and General Morel. Max climbs to the roof and watches as Titov and his reinforcements search for Sylvia and General Morel. Max, Sylvia, and General Morel are being picked up by a helicopter right at moment. Max follows Sylvia and General Morel as they leave, and he boards the helicopter without being seen. Jonesy and Sinclair are covering him, so he runs toward them. The movie ends with Anya and Tita finally meeting at a restaurant. After informing Anya that they must track down and eliminate Vesa, she leaves. Anya stabs Tita in the neck with a knife right before she leaves the restaurant. Furthermore, she tracks down General Morel in Switzerland when he is on vacation and kills him. Anya finds Vesa, who is working as a cook in a little restaurant on the Canary Islands, and takes him out for a stroll on the sand. Vesa receives his passport from Anya before boarding a flight to Buenos Aires and a new life. In France, Max meets Marie in a restaurant. She gets the chance to explain what happened in Belarus and why the president of Finland was killed while Sylvia is back to her family. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and help the channel grow.